Hello and welcome back. In our last video, we successfully configured JupyterLab as our working environment on Docker. If you haven't configured that environment, I would recommend you to go back and watch that video first. Today we are going to configure our S3 and IAM privileges for Delta Lake to communicate with AWS S3. First, we will configure the bucket and the folder structure that is required for this series. In my S3, I have created one bucket, Ease with Data. I have created one folder, DW with PySpark. I have the following folder structure. The files will land in the landing folder. We have a respective folder for the respective files. Once the files are processed, the files will be moved to archive folder. Again, we have different folders for each of the files. We have warehouse folder that will hold the data that is required for the data warehouse. Now we will configure IAM privileges that is required by the Delta Lake and PySpark to connect with S3. IAM into IAM user groups. We'll create one new group called S3 Demo Access. Let's attach S3 full access policy to this group. Click on create group. Once your group is created, now we'll go to users to create a new user. This user will have access to S3 and we will use this user credentials to connect Delta Lake to S3. Let's create a new user. S3 demo user. Click on next. Add this user to S3 demo group. Click on next. Click on create user. User is successfully created. Now we will go to the user. Click on security credentials. Scroll down to access keys. Create an access key. Select command line interface. I understand. Next. Create access key. Now you can see the access key is created. You can copy and keep this access key handy. We will need this access key to configure PySpark with S3. Let us quickly create our working directory structure. We will create a new folder. Once we are inside our working folder, let's open terminal. Open the bash shell. Let us create our AWS credential file that would be used by Boto to communicate with S3. Change to the user directory. Create a folder called .aws. Change to that folder. Create a file called credential. We'll create a default profile. Paste your access key ID in the first line and access secret key in the second line that we created from AWS. Let's save the file. Now let us configure our Spark defaults. For that, change to directory cd spark conf. We will add some default parameters in spark defaults.conf that would be loaded by Spark automatically. Open the file spark defaults.conf. We have to add few lines in the bottom of the file. For this, go to the repository ease with data on GitHub. Open DW with PySpark folder, go to conf, open sparkdefaults.conf and copy the bottom lines from 28 till 32. Go back to the sparkdefaults.conf and paste the lines. The first line is to load some default packages that would be required for us. First one is the Delta Lake package. Second one is used by Spark to communicate with AWS. 
and the second line we are using as Spark session default extension. For the catalog, we are going to use Delta catalog, and this is the default location for Spark warehouse. We will change this path to S3. This is our path on S3. We will let the Derby file at the same location of our default working directory. Save the file. Now we have to add hypesite.xml file that would help us to communicate with Metastore. Let's create the file. Again, come back to the conf repository in the GitHub and copy the hype site XML. Paste the content of the hype site XML and save the file. Now let's add our AWS credential in Spark environment.sh for Spark to connect with AWS. Go to the bottom of the file, add the following line and change the key to your key that you have just generated from AWS. Once you have copied the key, save the file and we are done. Now our PySpark Jupyter Lab environment and Delta Lake can communicate with AWS S3 very easily. Keep learning. Keep growing, keep sharing.